Hello everyone, welcome to our channel, Let's Decode. Who doesn't love playing games? And every one of you would have played Snake Game in your childhood, right? But, do you know we can design the game on your own? Today, in this session we are going to start learning how to design a Snake Game. Excited? Yes? Okay, let's start this session without further delay. Before jumping into the design, let's have a brief idea on what to design. To be more specific, let's have a blueprint of our game. Game starts on pressing any key. Directions can be controlled from both keyboard and buttons available. Snake length increases after eating target along with score. Randomly generate target. Stops when enter or pause is pressed and start again when any key pressed. Speed varies after scoring. Stops when it bites itself. So now you have an idea of what to design, remaining is to know how to design. Let me divide the design into parts so it's easy to design and understand. Creating images. Generate snake. Moving snake. Controlling snake. Generate target. Increase snake length when snake bites target. Game over when it bites itself. In the first section, we will see how to create types of images like gray and RGB images. Why images? because images are heart and soul of any game design in MATLAB. Here to get a movement to the snake, we refresh the image for certain time interval, which looks like a motion video. Let's see how to create images and update image. Now open MATLAB, create a new script, and create a new matrix IM with some random numbers. Now display the image using IM show function. Oops, that doesn't work, because the variable IM is not an image, let's convert it using UINT8 function and display again. UINT8 stands for Unsigned 8-Bit Integer, Most Used Class in Image Processing Toolbox. That works, but we can't see it clearly. Again display it using subimage function. That work fine. What we observe, each pixel filled with color with varies from black to white, based on the pixel value given in the respective array. But how to create a RGB image, let's see. Create three different matrices of size 10 by 10 for red, green, and blue respectively, using zeros function. Zeros function create an M by N matrix of zeros. We created the matrices, now to create an RGB image, we have to concatenate these matrices, and let's do it, using cat function, which concatenates the input arrays along the dimension mentioned. We concatenated image, let's display it by converting it into UINT8. We get a black image because we initialized the values to zero. Change any variable values to some other constant using one's function and display it again. Wow, we get a colored image. Now let's try different combination. Color of the image changes with the value in the matrices. Hope you understand how to create a color image. Try more combination by changing the values. With this we completed our first part, creating images. How to create a snake in image. Before that, what exactly snake looks like in images. It's combination some pixels, not all but, only some pixels. But how to color only some part of the image, to different color. It's very easy, we just change the color of the respective pixel values, with the color combination we like. Let's define the points of the snake. Here, LOCX represents the horizontal positions of the snake whereas, LOC represents the vertical positions of the snake. That means at the positions 5060, 5061 and so on we have to change the color. Define the backgrounds, matrix containing RGB values. We initialized all the values to zeros because as we saw earlier the background is black. If the observe the snake the first pixel, let's say the head of the snake, is red and the remaining body is green. So change the color of the image at the first position to red, by making the red color matrix to 255, and remaining to zero. Similarly, for the remaining body change the color of the positions to green, by making the green color matrix position values to 255, and remaining to zero. Now concatenate the three matrices as one and display it. We get our desired result, right? Create update snake function for further use. Let's create GUI so we can work on it. Go to command window type guide. Then create new GUI open blank GUI. Now drag the axis from the side menu bar and push buttons for controls and change its tag so that we can understand while writing code. Put a static field to show the score. 
Now save it. If we want to start the game when I press the start game button, we have to put the previous written code in this function. Copy the code, paste it here. Take the update snake function out of it. Make the RGB matrices as global variables so they can be changed anywhere in the program. Call the update snake function in it. Now run the GUI. When I press the start game button it shows the snake. We completed our second section also, let's move forward. Moving snake mainly depends on altering the first and last pixels. If you observe closely while moving first pixels become second, second become third, third become fourth and so on. Based on the direction first pixel is changed, if we want to move top we will decrease the x value of first pixel, if we want to move down we will increase x value of the first pixel, similarly we increase y to move right, and decrease y to move left. Let's check this one by one. Go to start game push button function. Create a while to run continuously until we break the atsum condition like it bites itself. Display the image in every time loop runs and pause for 0.1 seconds. Create variable to store the length of the snake for further use. Initially clear the snake. As we discussed already first pixel position becomes second pixel when moved, second pixel become third and so on. The whole operation is done in these two lines. First move the snake in left direction, so we decrease y values. Let's run it. Wow, it's moving. But when it reached the end, it stops and throw an error. Don't worry, we will discuss it in next few minutes. Let's check other directions also. All directions worked successfully. Let's come back to the problem we encountered. Declare a variable for the direction. Let's take the default direction is left, which has value 3. If the snake is moving right and reached end, that is 100th column, then the next column has to be first column, else we increase the column by 1. If the snake is moving up and reached first row, then the next row has to be the 100th row, else we decrease the row value by 1. Similarly, for the remaining directions also. Now update the snake and run it. Yup, it works. Check it for other directions also. Go to end game push button and write the command to close the GUI when end game push button is pressed. Great, we completed the design. Let's see how to control the snake. In our previous parts we put some push buttons to control the direction of the snake. Let's go to push buttons callbacks. First when we press the right push button, if the snake is not moving in left direction, then it will change the direction. What the need to check the condition, because if the snake is moving in left direction, it can't move in right direction, so that's the reason to check the condition. If it doesn't satisfy we change the direction. Similarly, for the remaining push buttons also we check the conditions and change the direction. Let's check it. It's working I think. You can observe that direction won't change as we press right push button when the snake is moving in left direction. Let's see how to control it using keyboard. Open the GUI, double click on the GUI, inspector window will pop up. Search for press key function and edit it, it will direct you to the function. Here we have to check the case of which key is pressed. When a key is pressed, its name will be stored in variable key. In case, if the key is up arrow, we have to change the direction value to 2, only if the previous direction is not down, same conditions we used for push buttons apply here, and write the conditions for all the cases. If the key is other than these four key we won't change the direction. That's all, let's run it. Start the game, controlling it with push buttons. Now I am controlling it from my keyboard, it works fine in both the cases. We have completed half of the design procedure. Let's move forward. We completed snake movements and its controlling. Remaining is generating the target and let it bite by snake. Let's see how to generate the target. Go to start game function, along with the snake, we have to generate the target. 
Use randPerm function, which generate a random number in the range of 1 to 100. Let's change the target color to white. Let's check. We get the target. Check again, whether we obtain the target at same position or not. We got the target at different position, and that's the advantage of randPerm function. We generated target, but what if the target is placed on the snake itself? It's an invalid target, so to avoid it, we have to check the target position with the snake position. If they are same, we have to generate another point. This process continues till we obtain valid target. When valid target is obtained it break from the loop and we display the target. Before increasing the length, first we should check whether the snake bite the target. Check the first pixel position is equal to the target position, then it bites the target, then we increase the length. After snake bites the target we have to generate another target. Let me copy the code to generate the random target and paste it here. If snake doesn't bite the target, length will not increase as we saw earlier. We have to increase the points when snake bite, so let's create a variable to store the score. Update the score in static field using set function by converting the points to string using num2str function. And finally we have to update the target. Let's run it. So we can see points increases and length of the snake also increases, and a new target is generated. Done, let's go to next part. We came to the last part of the design. We have to check if the snake bite itself. If it bites itself then we have to show message and stop the game. Are you ready? Go to stat game callback. If the first pixel of the snake is equal to any one of the positions in the snake, then we consider it as the snake bite itself. Then we will change the background to red by making red matrix high and remaining zero. And we display the image. We show the message using message box function. We break the loop. Now run it. I let the snake bite itself, then we can observe that background changes to red, and a message box pop up indicating the game is over. We completed the seventh part also. Are we done? No, there is something we left. Do you get it? Yes, we still have to make the pause button work, like we see in the demo. So let's go to start game callback function, to create a move status variable, and initialize it to zero. But why? Don't worry you will understand it within no time. Go to up direction call back and make move direction variable value 1, do the same for the remaining push buttons also. Now, in the pause button, make the move status variable value to 0. I hope you understand what we are doing. Yes, we make use of variable to move the snake. When move status is 1, snake moves. And when it is 0, it doesn't move. As we did for push buttons, do it for keyboard press function also. Here return represents the enter, that means when we press enter it will pause. Now apply the condition in main while loop. When the move status is high, then all the manipulations will happen, otherwise snake will not move. Now run it. It's working. There is something we has to change. When we run the program, it shows us the black axis, let's change it. Go to output function and call start game function. What it actually does? It calls the start game callback before making the GUI visible, to make it simple, without pressing the start game button, by default it will start the game. Hope you understand. Now go to open function, and set the axis 1 as the default axis, and make the axis off. It will clear the blank axis, we usually get before starting the game. Run it again to check. We can observe that, even before I press the start game button, the game starts. Now the last part is, changing the speed based on the score, let's complete it. Create a variable t with value 0.1, it tells us that the initial refreshing time is 0.1 seconds. Change this to t, rewrite the conditions as follows. If the score reached 5 then, the refreshing time is reduced to 0.08 seconds, if the score reached 10, the refreshing time is 0.05 seconds, if the score reached 15, then, refreshing time is 0.03 seconds, and we take some more conditions. Yup, we completed the whole game design. Now play the snake game. Wait for a second, do you observe any changes from the demo video and our designed game?
Yes, there is a little difference. Let's see what it is. I designed three different levels of the game, these blue color boundary is restricted line. When snake touches it, game is over. These are the two different levels. But how to design it? I won't discuss it now. Do it by yourself, as a self-assessment. If you succeed doing it, share it in the comments section below. We will be very happy. If you find difficulty in doing it, let us know through comments, so we will plan to do other video on it. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you haven't checked out our Instagram page yet, please go and check out, we're uploading some technology updates and our video updates. You can ask your doubts there as well. Thank you once again and say an aura.